you can be your own boss, but if you don't deliver, your small business is going to suffer. You might as well just go back to your W-2. Hey, I just wanted to say that Kevin's mic did not actually turn on for the interview, so it's not gonna be quite 100% perfect, but the value and the information that he's providing is still there. It was still a great conversation, and in future videos, that will not be a problem, hopefully. So, if it's too big of a deal, let us know. We can always reshoot it. Thank you. Hi, this is Kevin, and I'm here with my interviewer, Ryan, and we are doing it a little bit differently today. In the past, it's me, right in front of the camera, having a monologue with the camera lens, and it's getting me a little bit uncomfortable. I don't have the interaction that I typically get when I speak to a group of people. So we're doing it differently this time, where Ryan actually created a prepared a set of questions ahead of time and he's going to ask me these questions so we can have some interaction there and uh, so we're just gonna free flow just freestyle this and he's gonna pick my brain I'm just gonna give him whatever that comes to my mind and hopefully this can be valuable to you the listeners and make sure that uh, you subscribe so that uh, you can get more videos like this. The interactivity hopefully will help you listeners. And if you have any comments, make sure that you put them down below and I will personally go into these comments and answer your questions as well. All right, so let's move on to our questions time. Yeah, kind of like what Kevin was saying, we're trying a different format. He has a little bit of trouble speaking to the camera, which is totally normal. Um, if you've ever spoken to a camera, you'll know how difficult that is. And there's a, there's a mental block for some people. So this is just what we're doing. Um, we're open to suggestions or um, constructive criticism because ultimately the end goal is to help you guys and give you guys um, as much value as we can about short-term rentals and real estate investment and everything, everything real estate related. So anything you have about that, let us know. Um, but Kevin, the first answer that I have is who are you and why are you, why are you credible? Why would somebody listen to you? I am Kevin and I've been doing real estate for, for the last 13 years since 2010. Before that, I did it passively while I have my W-2. I've uh, dabbled anything from wholesaling, fix and flip, short term, long term rental, multifamily syndication, anything that you can think of, I have done. Uh, there is uh, creative financing that's been thrown around. So I know that too. I have two properties that uh, I actually took over, actually more than two, that uh, I took over the loan. It's called Subject 2, and that's creative financing or seller financing, seller carry. There is uh, different terms for the same word definition. And uh, so I know that as well. So anything on the real estate that I know a little bit of. And uh, so I'm just here uh to uh give you value anything that you ask me it's just from my experience and i think that experience is the greatest teacher uh i mentioned about the school of hard knocks that's where you gain the most knowledge yeah. the most learning yeah i agree i think um as as you know i'm very young um, i'm only 19 so in terms of learning and actually applying knowledge i'd say most of it i've learned just from this. So I, I definitely agree that school of hard knocks and the school of uh, uh, real life experiences is, is definitely um, the best way to learn. It, it's the quickest way to uh, um, process through just with trial and error, just figure out what works and figure out what doesn't, um, which kind of uh, ties into what we are going to be talking about today. Um, I know that people stay in their comfort zones and that stops them from achieving their wildest dreams of, you know, whatever that is. So th that's what I wanted to ask you about originally is, um, uh, is like, is, is comfort zone. So like, how, what do you think about, um, people staying in their comfort zones and that stopping them from achieving their dreams? 
I think that uh, uh, I try to push people a lot to get out of their comfort zone and they will push back so I don't ask people anymore but I will take myself out of the comfort zone not because uh, I want to because there's uh, still a lot of resistance coming from my mental paradigm my upbringing and whatnot but I realized that that is the best way for me to learn to go to the next level if I stay here long enough that means that I'm not growing and that means that uh, I am just being too comfortable with whatever that uh, state that I am in and uh, it's just that um, uh, comfort is, is the best, it's, it's, the, it's the biggest enemy to success to any business owner and uh, I, I think that uh, you should always be aware of your surrounding, especially you're running a business or as an entrep entrepreneur, a business owner, uh, there's a lot of uh, changes that can happen. So if you don't stay ahead of the game, you can uh, get eliminated. I'm talking about uh, uh, digital media. That's right. what you do, right? right. Uh, you want to stay ahead. How is AI going to revolutionize that business? Uh, we so wish that there's AI that can do a lot more right. in terms of video editing, right, right. right? And I think that it's gonna come sometime. We don't know when, but when that time comes, are you are you gonna be the one that's going to adapt? Are you going to want to take that change, right, right? and then take your uh, business further, or yeah. are you gonna just be doing the same old thing and yourself, right? Yeah, and that's gonna just uh, it's going to increase your efficiency see, trem tremendously. So might as well just uh, embrace it versus uh, resisting it. And that resisting it is staying in the comfort zone because you don't want to learn. Learning something is, can be difficult, can be challenging. Right. And, and that's, why, that's why I'd like to work uh, with uh, you know, just uh, young people like you because they're open to change they're open to suggestions and I learned a thing or two from young people who are like that. Yeah. Well, Have you ever heard that. of this thing? Like the old dogs, like, uh, they don't learn no, their tricks? Learn tricks, yeah. That's a, it's a big thing I've noticed and especially like with, uh, with, with social media, a lot of people are tied to like, um, like film, right? They'll shoot for like, as if it's like something that's going to go on Netflix or something for um, like streaming which don't get me wrong has its place but ultimately i think people aren't um really accepting of the fact that things are changing like youtube for example a lot of um older people still see youtube as like this like oh that's what that's what little kids do which is understandable because that is what a lot of um little kids do but i think ultimately it's it's such an undervalued asset and so many people are missing out on that because they're not able to um like you were saying, get out of their comfort zone and adapt to new change. I know that for, for me personally, the way I see it, um, you mentioned AI, the way I see it is like AI is gonna help me, everybody grow really. Um, I can only speak through my own perspective. I see how it's gonna help me grow, like help my business grow um, and improve. And I see that over time, that's, that's gonna be something that's helpful and beneficial. And I think that as soon as people are able to step out of their comfort zone, and accept that um, they need to adapt and change, then yeah, like you were saying, it's gonna take their business, you know, who knows how big things are gonna expand. Um, I really like uh, Gary Vee's, I don't know if you've heard of it, but he talks about how like, people used to be scared of tractors. Have you heard this? No. So he, um, he explains how people used to complain about how tractors were taking away jobs, which isn't wrong, um, but they were also making the jobs that they did have way more efficient. So if you had 10 people, you know, and a tractor could do the job of 10 people, well, then why don't you just give a tractor to each one of those people? And now you've 10x to your business. With something like AI, I can see very quickly how that could, um, or I, I can see very easily how quickly that would have that effect on any industry. Yeah. 
So and having that track that doesn't eliminate jobs, it exactly. creates more jobs because you gotta have people operate those tractors. Right. So it's replacing one job with another job. Right. That's gonna make the whole thing run more efficiently. So do you think that um, with that change in the uh, job marketplace, it's going to require people to learn new skills and new trades? And do you think they'll even forget some of the older trades? You have to learn or you're gonna be left behind. Right. Uh, whether you you like it or not, right? Uh, when uh, I mentioned this before, is hey, uh, back in the old days, nineteen twenties, right? When right. Ford first came out with uh, the diesel car, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a lot of people riding horse carriage. Yeah, but as there's more cars on the street and the streets are getting better and better, it's not cobblestone. It's actually streets that's paved yeah. with asphalt, yeah. so that cars can actually drive on the road. Yeah, uh, you can't ride a horse. You can't ride on horse carriage anymore. Right. Whether you like it or not, uh, right. you just have to buy a car, and they're just getting it, getting it cheaper and cheaper. Almost like the revolution that we have right now like ev is taking over whether you like it or not yeah a lot of these car manufacturers like that on diesel uh, they, they resist the change for so many years and now they have to make a move or they're gonna get all competed and right. be be left behind so they they're the adoption is coming and like just this wave of ai it's it's coming too a lot of older people over 50, they have no freaking clue what AI is about. Right. And there's also ones that are embracing the technology. And if you embrace it, it's gonna like save so much of your time. And uh, that's why, you know, you can hire people who are the pros right. or to do it. Just so that at least you know, yeah. or you can just be uh, somebody that's uh, in a, in a stone age yeah, and yeah. Uh, choose not to yeah. and then uh, just cut out all these efficiencies all the benefits that technology can offer you. yeah i found well with technology specifically i found that it's not at least in my field and from what i know keeping in mind that i'm very young and don't know very much um, what i have seen is it's not really like at the level where it's completely replacing people so like to kind of put it into perspective i had one client who uh he needed a, a a YouTube banner, you know, like when you go on the page and there's the, the it's like their face and it says, oh, follow me here. He needed that done. And uh, the picture he gave me that he wanted to use was a picture of his family on a uh, bluff or a cliff in Hawaii. And uh, it was it was a very small picture, but I used Adobe's, uh, you know, their Photoshop like autofill. Well, I, I used that and I sent it to him and... Um, he said it looked exactly like it and I had never been there before. So that was also lucky because you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want. But, um, I think that goes to show that it's not, it, it still requires that human touch and initiative is really what it is because we're going to know, we're going to have preferences and biases on like yeah. what we want it to do, yeah. um, and what we want it to produce specifically. Yeah. Well, AI can only do so much, right? There is your characteristics, personality, your uh, authenticity right right that ai cannot capture yeah so for uh now. for now right yeah uh but I, I do see a hybrid like we working with ai and to produce something that's just greater than the uh the the uh the parts of the sum oh the, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole some of the parts is greater than the whole right yeah so um, there's, there's definitely that cooperation and uh, I, I just can't emphasize enough the importance of that cooperation. Right. And you might as well just embrace it, learn it. It's almost like, hey, um, when internet came out, uh, emails, right, yeah. a browser, um, it's like you cannot not use email. Right. You know that. <laughs> I was a little before my time, but... Um, and yeah. for you, for you, it's like for you, it's, it's, always been, it's, yeah. it's like how how do you live in right. an age where there's no emails? Well, now, I mean, from my perspective, email is even like 
It's still to this day people use. use. Yeah, people use still a fax use fax machine. But uh, yeah, fax machines. No one uses those that I know of. I'm sure you know there's still people that do. But uh, yeah, but emails are like that's like. From what I understand, that's like the equivalent of what writing a letter used to be. Like that's the quote formal way to reach out to somebody. I know that like with you, I reached out on Instagram just because it's easier for me to to reach a bunch of people that way. Chances are, if people in the area are watching this, I've probably reached out to you the same way. Um, there, there's actually been a couple times where I've connected with somebody in real life and then I check and I had already messaged them like several months before. Um, Nice. And that, yeah, no, hey, sowing the seed. Huh? You're sowing the seed. Yeah, it, you know, it, uh, it, it's just a new way of doing things. Um, but going back to like how comfort is, um, for lack of a better word, killing people's businesses, I almost, from my perspective, I almost feel like people are finding comfort and doing things the hard way just because it's what they know. So it's not necessarily that it's comfort because the, the new way is more comfortable, it's easier. So it's not comfort, it's just that they're sticking to what they know. So do you think it's that they don't want to learn more or do you think it's that they're genuinely more comfortable than they would be if they were to learn more? Uh, learning a new thing is not comfortable. Right. It requires um, skills Right. Uh, that uh, you, uh, you must have to acquire uh, a, 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 a new learning uh, skill. Right. And uh, that's not comfortable. Like going to school to learn uh, a subject and taking exam right. to make sure that you actually get that subject is not comfortable. Yeah. And uh, after you've learned it, you've done all the projects, and uh, you think that uh, you are proficient in the subject. Yeah. You are comfortable and uh, taking algebra, right? You complete the course, not algebra two, calculus, or before that, pre calculus. Even, yeah, I don't think they listed that. That is anymore. not comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Especially somebody who is math challenged. Right. Uh, that's not comfortable. English is not comfortable to me. Right. That's like the the, 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 the the most uncomfortable subject that I want to touch. I yeah. hate writing essays. Yeah. I can never ever get it right. Yeah. And I had this, how do I say this? I had this such a bad experience because I didn't get that encouragement from my English teacher. Oh, okay, yeah. everything that I did was just wrong and I had to fit my essay in that format yeah. Like the, 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 what is it? The, there's the like the, your, your thesis the body and, then, sentence yeah. and yeah. all that, you know, yeah. so that's not comfortable, but that's how that makes you great. Right. I think that that also goes to show like the importance of having a good teacher, which is something that at least as of right now, AI can't replace. Like there's no teacher that's going to know exactly when to en encourage you and what to encourage you about. Like there's still that aspect of human psychology that is really hard for people to nail down just from what I've seen. Um, even like, like we were talking about video editing um, and before we turned the cameras on, I was saying how uh, as great as some of the AI video editing is, it can't really accommodate like what demographic you're trying to target. So if you, for example, um, I'm going off memory here, so take it with a grain of salt, but a lot of your audience is like between I think it was 18 to 35 um, males in the United States. And I think that's like 89.7% of your audience falls within those outliers or those uh, demographics. Mind you, that's vague, but AI isn't going to really know how to incorporate that information about those demographics into the content that it's producing, which I think is well, ultimately the only reason that I still have a job is because uh, that part isn't quite there yet, which um, I, I know that eventually it will be, but I think that right now it, it's, it's failing there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like there's that, that aspect of human psychology and that aspect of um, positive and neg negative um, rewards and punishment or consequences, I should say, that aren't really tied into it yet because there's no, there's no moral ground, which is a whole other thing 
that I'm sure we could get into, and I'm sure we probably will some other time. Um, but right now I want to ask like to the person who's watching this, who is hearing what we're saying and realizing like, Hey, I'm stuck in my comfort zone and they're right. I would learn more if I got out of it. What would you say to that person so that they can start taking steps to get out of their comfort zone? Uh, I say that, uh, imagine somebody is putting a gun to your kid's head. What? Imagine that uh, if you don't do this thing, that you're going to be live on the street. That is how I start my day. I don't, I don't look at how much money I have in the bank account. I look at, uh, I start my day with zero in the bank account. Yeah. And I say, hey, I must prospect. So I, Grant Cardone has this question, who's got my money? And he asks that question every single day. Who's got my money? Ryan, do you have my money? Sure. If not, if not, I'm going to go to find a client who's got my money. I'm going to do sales to make sure that that person pays me. It can be this seller, that seller, whoever. I'm going to prospect like crazy so that I can get that money in the bank. I get enough of that money so I can do whatever I can do whatever I want with whoever I want, whatever I want. And that's wealth. Right. Do you think that, um, well, first I should say that I, I, I partially agree with you that wealth is having a lot of money. Um, I think a lot of people like demonize that and say it's a bad thing to seek out money, um, specifically to generate a lot of it. I don't really see it that way. Um, of course there's exceptions. Like if you're enslaving people to get more money, different story, you know, um, but my point, money can magnify uh, the person's uh, vices or strengths. So if you're if you're a good person, you can do a lot of good without money. But if you're a bad person, you can also do a lot of harm right. with a lot of money. Right. Well, so that kind of ties in what I was going to ask, um, because ultimately it's not money that makes or breaks somebody. It just magnifies what's already there. I, I know that's something that we, uh, that's a viewpoint that we share. Um, do you think that it is worthwhile to pursue money as a sort of vehicle to get you out of the environment that you're in? Like if you're surrounded by people who you don't like, do you think it's worth pursuing money and cutting them off in the process? I, I, I see money as, uh, as the means, not the goals. Okay. It's, it's not, Hey, um, I, uh, can you repeat that question? So I'm pretty much asking, like, do you think if you're stuck in a bad environment or not even a bad environment, but just one that's not optimal to where you want to go, do you think it's worth sacrificing that? in exchange for chasing wealth. So not the wealth itself, but like the chase, kind of like what you're saying, chasing the means, yeah. not money as um, the goal. Yeah. So uh, I think that uh, as you continue to learn, uh, you will, uh, you will, you will, you will lose uh, people that uh, you hang out with because you're on a different level. What does that mean? Um, when you say different level, what is that? Is that like status or class or how do you see that? Let's just say, Hey, uh, I just realized I can do drugs and people hang out with me, uh, drug addicts. Okay. Go to parties all the time. Okay. I have a paradigm shift. I say, this is not going to benefit me. I have better use of my time. I I've grown out of this, even though my friends just realized, Hey, you know, this is still cool and I don't mind doing this for the rest of my life right. because they don't have the next level of awareness. Eventually these people that you hang out with are no longer going to be there. Right. Either because you, you, you just don't talk to them or they just don't find any interest in hang out with you because yeah. you're so boring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you hang out with people that, um, that uh, you uh, have uh, interest, uh, you know, you have interest in, 
Yeah. Right. Whether it's, hey, I just want to uh, grow your mindset, personal development. You'll, you attract those people in your life. Right. Or, um, hey, you want to go into building a business empire in, uh, in media. Yeah. Yeah. You'll hang out with these people. Yeah. You'll go to these masterminds or these conferences, trade groups. Right. And then you'll hang out with these people. Yeah. And the people that you used to hang out with, they're, they're just going to be out of your circle. Yeah. It's not really like the money is going to get you to a different crowd. It's more like as you um, elevate yourself, right, uh, you're going to hang out with different people. And then money is going to come as a byproduct of it. Okay. It's not, it's not really the end. Correlation. Not it's correlation. the means to okay. the end. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause there's, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I hate to keep bringing up that I'm young, but it, it keeps coming up that it's relevant. Um, I'm fresh out of high school where obviously, you know, drugs and parties and all that stuff is, is, um, I guess, I guess very popular would be the best way to describe it, which not my place to judge. Not that I am judging. It's just, it's different than what I want to do with my time. But I'm like, I'm still friends with some people who are, um, not quite what you're describing. Um, like they, you know, have great goals and, and great aspirations, but you know, they still do those other things. Um, I bring that up to ask, do you think there's like a, a balance? Because I personally feel like, you know, if, if you're reaching your goals and you're, benefiting the people around you, which I feel like the people I talk to are like that. Um, if you're, if you're meeting those criteria, do you think there's, do you think it's possible to still have room for those other things? I think that, uh, I, I'll, I'll just say that, uh, an example of, uh, hiking, okay. there's rest stops. Okay. There is uh, checkpoints or milestones. Okay. And you reach a milestone, it's okay to stay there for a while, chill, mm. right? And have a good time. And it's up to you if you want to continue that journey, go to the next milestone. And hopefully your answer is going to be yes, because you know, at the end of this, it's going to be a gorgeous, scenic waterfall waiting for you. Right. Okay. Uh, at the end of this, this two mile, I don't know, 10 mile trail, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you can get tired. You just say you choose to stay here or you choose to turn back. It's okay. Nobody's judging you. Right. You run your own course, your journey. Right. And everybody's course journey is different. Some want a lot more and yeah, some do not. Right. Some are okay staying in their comfort zone for me. It's just me that I want to always grow because okay. I realize that, uh, that's, that's what uh, drives me. That's what makes everything so interesting for me. And I do believe that, uh, if, uh, if you're not growing, you're going to get eventually left behind. It's not yeah. up to you. So I would encourage people to do it, but if you don't, maybe a state job yeah. is, is, is what is okay with you right. and that's totally fine because because we need us people we need these people yeah. we need people who are entrepreneurs business owners but we also need these w2 they're okay with jobs yeah. but you also need uh creators of those jobs yeah right well i think especially nowadays like it's almost it's almost like a a, a noble cause to not um be like a business owner or an entrepreneur because it's very trending right now. Um, and I think like, I, I definitely tip my hat to people who, you know, still are working in a W2 and still doing a quote normal job, I think are just as important, if not even more important to like the foundation of our society, because it's not, wow, it sounded really like <laughs> uh, edgy, I guess. Um, it's, Hey, I'd, go ahead. Can I say something? Yeah. I say I agree with you 100% just because that um, don't, don't hide the fact that you cannot listen to, a, to your boss or you cannot deliver uh, in the 
in the excuse or disguise of, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur and create a job. You can be your own boss, but if you don't deliver, your small business is going to suffer. You might as well just go back to your W-2 and do a great job. Yeah. Uh, some people quit because uh, they just cannot handle uh, the, the demand from their uh, superior. Uh, and then don't, don't use the excuse of, hey, I just want to do my own venture and blah, you know, just so that, uh, you know, uh, uh, I can uh, be a provider of job opportunities to other people. Right. You're, you're actually doing yourself a disservice. It's not, it's not. I, I would even encourage people, right? Like if I were to start this all over again, I would have one foot in a full-time job, another foot in my side hustle, yeah. until I think that the side hustle can potentially be a business, yeah. and that requires so much discipline on my part yeah. to make it so, yeah. I'll probably work harder than anybody who's got a full-time job, right. because I have two foot in yeah. each of these, right, to make it happen. Yeah. So before you can prove yourself, stay in that job, uh, until that your side hustle can potentially turn into a business and then you can tell your boss, hey, Sal Nara, it's yeah. time for me to go because I have something going on here and I really yeah. think that this is going to be something. I'm I not saying that, that it's you, but it looks like just from the discipline, your, the character, personality, right, your, your work ethic, that uh, you're, you're, not, you're not really a W-2 employee. I appreciate you have that. Your own Thing going on, I think this is gonna turn out to something that's gonna be so wonderful. Thank uh, you. you don't really need somebody to tell you to do this and that. That's really just boxing your creativity. Uh, you have so much to offer, and uh, I mean, um, I think the service yeah you provide is gonna impact a lot of people. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's funny you mentioned how having one foot in like a full-time job and one foot not. I couldn't do that. I tried with like a, having a part-time job until I built up enough and I got like... And that's a good thing too, yeah. because that means you're so f focused on this, on this venture. It's your baby. Yeah. How can you take your baby part-time? Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. No, I got... Um, I, there was a minute where I was trying to save up. My goal was $10,000 because I figured if all else fails, I can live off of $10,000 because I have very low overhead. Like I'm still living with... Uh, not my parents, but my girlfriend's parents, and it's like, I'd be okay. Um, but what actually happened was I got probably about 300 and then went, well, if I don't put everything into this, there's no way. Which, by the way, don't do that if you're somebody who's in that position, because that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Um, but what I was trying to say earlier, um, not to sound like, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that clip of Will Smith's kid where he's like, oh, I want to talk about um, like society. Have you seen that? I'll have to show you after, but it's this, it's this, I forget his name exactly, but it's this kid who's, who's clearly trying to like sound uh, older than he is. So I'm saying not to sound like that, but I feel like the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a big, uh, but, um, I feel like we shouldn't weigh the value of the people around us based on what they're doing as we shouldn't weigh the value of the people around us based on their best selves as much as, as it is their average selves. And I think that can apply to the world on a macro scale. Like we shouldn't look at um, society as this, uh, you know, only the best of it, but see like, what does the average look like? Like what's the average Wednesday look like? Is it everybody's fighting and is it war torn? Is it everybody's in palaces? and totally spoiled and corrupted or is it like you know people are going to work doing their jobs at their w-2s which some people look down on but they're not acknowledging like how important that is so what do you think about that i think that's totally right uh there's just people that uh they are uh they just cannot be entrepreneurs yeah uh, there's people that uh, uh are born to be entrepreneurs. Uh, so um, you have to be able to make a distinction. Yeah. And uh, like, like, like I said, uh, I can't be one 
because I realized how suffocating that is to me, yeah. uh, to, to my creativity and to my growth. Yep. I can't imagine being in that environment for the rest of my career. Yeah. And I feel like uh, for me to fulfill, to have fulfillment is to pursue this thing and then to impact a lot more people yeah. that way. But there's not, nothing wrong with that because, hey, how do you how do you build out this discipline of going to work at nine right. and clocking out at five? Right. Okay, if you don't have a discipline as a solo per, uh, entrepreneur, solo tri- pr- solo entrepreneur, solo something like that. Yeah, uh, it's probably better for you to uh, you know get a full time job or yeah. to get a side hustle so that you can introduce some kind of a discipline. In your schedule, yeah, because it's so easy as a solopreneur to just say, "Hey, because I don't work for anybody, me, except me, I, I get to, I get to make up my own schedule. I, I report to myself. So who is going to keep you accountable? Right. So you probably need to get an accountability partner just to keep you in check. Yeah. Right. Hey, if I just don't feel like it. I wake up at ten or twelve. Yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna say, Hey, Ryan, uh, you woke up like three hours later. Right. Or you just say, Hey, I don't I don't feel like working till five. Right. Okay. And nobody is paying you. Nobody's going to fire you. Right. Okay. You don't have a job, you work for yourself. Yeah. Okay, the only thing that is keeping you in check is the revenue that you're gonna collect. 300, 10,000, whatever. Yeah. So you gotta perform, okay? You can't lie to yourself because what comes is what's in your bank, right? That's, that's the biggest KPI that you should be looking for yeah. is the money in the bank, right? It's not, it's not, hey, I'm gonna make you know, a certain number of calls. It's so different, that, that mentality. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It's a good way of putting it. Um, what I get from that, just to kind of summarize and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm getting from that is it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you are fulfilling your potential. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. Everybody, so we just finished this conversation. I would say a fireside com- conversation. We have the fireplace right behind the camera. This is a very candid conversation that we had. We're basically just giving our opinions on these matters. And I feel like uh, Ryan was able to just get it out of me. And uh, there's, uh, I, I'm sure that you have opinions on these matters as well. Yeah. Feel free to comment those down below. I would like to hear what you say about these. And I hope uh, we provide a lot of value here. So make sure you subscribe so that you can get more these videos like this. Yeah. Peace out. I wanna to say too that if you guys found any of this helpful or any of this interesting, please let us know. We just did a huge audit on Kevin's channel and uh, removed a lot of, or we, we unlisted a lot of videos so that we could specifically target um, people who are interested in this thing. So if you are into real estate and investing and wealth and money and entrepreneurship and any of the things we talked about here, AI I know is a big one, Mr. PhD in computer science, um, then let us know so that we can start making content specifically for that so that we can serve you guys. 